My name is Fadal Altarzi. I'm the Chief Executive Officer of Nexford University, and I co-founded this organization about four years ago. Online education is clearly on the rise. It's existed for over 20 years now. However, COVID-19 has obviously significantly accelerated the adoption of online education, whether it's in Kenya or across Africa or across the world. And there are a number of reasons why that is. Uh, you know, digital infrastructure is improving across the world. Youth populations are increasing in places like Africa, but the capacity of higher education in the traditional system isn't increasing at the same rate. At the same time, affordability challenges continue to rise, whether in the US or in Africa. Traditional higher education has become unaffordable to the majority of people, at least without having to access student loans. So, you know, we think of online education as a huge enabler for economic mobility. And when we think about career readiness, uh, we think online education can play a huge role in that. Career readiness is really defined as equipping yourselves with the skills that employers are actually looking for in order for employers to have to spend less time on training employees when they first join and therefore to be able to derive greater value from employees when they join them. So online education can really help bridge that gap that we've seen historically between traditional universities and what employers are looking for. So the digital world, I think, is the world. And the word digital itself will no longer be there going forward. You know, from a business perspective, businesses that don't adopt digital transformation simply will cease to exist. So the world has moved digital, which is the fact of the matter today. Now, that doesn't mean that everything is 100% digital but it means that everything is digitally enabled. And for anything to exist in the future, whether it's a job or a company or even a government, it has to be a digitally enabled government, digitally enabled business. So there's really a complete fusion between the two. Very similar to, you know, the way to think about it is the internet or computers. You know, there's no longer a computer department within organizations. Everyone in companies has a computer nowadays. So digital adoption is becoming completely native and education is just following that trend that we've seen for the past decade. So we think digital advancements and what we often refer to at Nexford as the global grid is actually a huge opportunity for Kenyans and for Africans at large, particularly when it comes to unemployment. The youth population is growing at a pace across Africa that far outpaces the rate of job growth. So we think the power of digital is in connecting youth across Africa with remote opportunities. Continents like the US and Europe have the opposite problem, which is the problem of aging populations, and their population isn't growing as fast as the African population is. So in a nutshell, we think digital education and then remote jobs are gonna provide a huge opportunity for social and economic mobility. If learners across Africa equip themselves with the skills they need, they will be able to access remote jobs and therefore their physical location will no longer deter their ability to access these jobs. So there's still a significant digital divide when you look at internet penetration, for example, across Africa, and you compare that with, say, smartphone penetration. Uh, same with things like credit card usage and even, even banking. So there are some infrastructure issues that need to be addressed before African youth can actually really capture all of the opportunities that exist around the world. Now, the good news is there are huge companies across the world that are addressing these challenges, you know, including companies like SpaceX, like Facebook, like Google, who are spreading and increasing access to broadband connectivity all across the continent. So to answer your question around digital divide specifically, I think infrastructure needs to improve, the price of connectivity needs to go down, and the price of devices needs to go down. But more importantly, I think the real opportunity is an increasing a cultural awareness and confidence. And that's one of the things that I particularly enjoyed seeing here in Kenya, is that there is a sense of hope. You know, youth in Kenya have an actual sense of hope that there are real career opportunities that exist, as opposed to a sense of despair that we see in other markets. So the government has sent a very clear signal here that the government is pushing digital transformation. So when there is a sense of hope, people will go and find the tools that they need in order to access these opportunities. If we had to predict the future, which uh, you know is difficult to do, I would say there are trends that we've seen emerge over the past years that will definitely come to reality. One will be a blend between online and offline. So this, this concept of comparing between online and offline will no longer exist. Uh, it's like talking about marketing today. When you talk about marketing today, digital marketing is inherently part of marketing. You can't do marketing without having a digital element. 
So I think the distinction between online and offline will no longer be as relevant as it is today. The second major trend that I think we will see is definitely the prevalence of uh, remote jobs. Whether it's from local Kenyan employers or employers across the world, remote jobs will become mainstream. They will almost become the default. So companies that require talent to go to the office on a daily basis will become the minority. And that will present a, a fantastic opportunity for talent all across the world. But equally, it will present a challenge for Kenyan employers because they will start competing for talent against foreign employers. So a Kenyan company will find itself competing for talent against the company from Texas or California or France. So the, the, the global talent pool will become completely virtual. The one's physical location will become less and less important. The other thing that we hope we will see over the coming years is other factors such as race, uh, gender, social class will also become less important. So again, the playing field will become more and more leveled all across the world and skills is what will matter a lot more than these factors.